are you doing with your sunglasses on? Huh? What are you doing with your sunglasses? I thought we're going outside. Okay, let's go outside. <laughs> so we're saying? chilling and grilling. Uh, part two. Toi. Let's go outside. Okay, let's go outside. Okay, so we've got the brisket on the grill. We've got the, ooh, see, something's happening out here. We've got the big steaks on the other grill. That's what smells. Oh, it smells good. Wish it was smell vision. All right, so. Uh, we've been talking uh, about grilling, about the tools that you need for grilling, yeah. about the right th thermometers, or about the right utensils, and so we're gonna continue on with the journey right now. Ready? Ready. All right, take it so away. So we just checked our grill temp, or our green egg temp. Green egg temp is at 226. Again, we're supposed to keep it between 225 and 250. So um, it's been sitting now, what are we at? What do we say, it's 115 now? Mm -hmm. Put it in on, at uh, a little around 7 30 8 o'clock so uh, we've been cooking that for about five hours we're going to let that continue to slow cook at around 225 for another four or five hours so the meat will be very tender we've actually um, i love that how it goes right inside right so we have that's one of the great things so there's two probes to this there is an what they call an air probe which is actually a probe that comes, that goes into the side of this, which gives us what the 226 is. It leaves from here and it goes, and you can see it entering into the green egg here. And there's a probe that just basically has a metal edge that shows the exact it, uh, air temperature inside the grill. So on the end of this cable. Right, so Got and it. that's important because you wanna know what's happening inside here, not just what's inside the meat, but what our surroundings are. Mm -hmm. So the better the surroundings for this, the more sealed it is, the better that we'll have a, a cook, better cooking experience. So then we'll come back later and we'll use the probe and the probe will actually take the little safety off of it and put it into the meat and make sure that what our target is, based on what we selected, is a brisket with a thick cut brisket. We're going to want it to be at 195. So when we test it, we want it to be at 195. So there's no use in testing it now because we don't we know it's going to cook for hours and hours. And we hours still have so. another five hours to go, so we're, there's absolutely no reason for us to go in and disrupt our environment. We don't want to disrupt Do our environment. And disrupt our environment. We have happy enough disruption of our environment around here as it is. We have a happy environment inside <laughs> our green egg, so we want to keep our happy environment. It's a little happy in there. <laughs> okay, let's go. On. Let's see what's the disruption going on on this grill. This is not disruption. This is. <laughs> The sizzle to the steak. Ooh, now look at that. It smells so good. Now doesn't that, doesn't that just smell awesome? I'm going to smell it from over here though because it's hot. <laughs> it is very hot. You know, we were over 400 Fortunately, degrees. we have these super so long tongs to grab that with. end up, where is our, when what we get our thermometer? Our thermometer. Oh yeah. So he's going to test the uh, the degrees of the uh, the temperature of the steak on the inside. But because he has that long uh, thermometer from yeah, Holder, totally we're able to uh, actually do that without getting too close to the heat, which is really cool. Okay, so, so if you missed it, we were talking about how, well, you take it away. You, you were good, you were doing awesome. <laughs> so first we turn it on, and then you'll see that up on top, right at the top, if you can see that, yeah. the first one is a meat. So it'll, we can select which meat. We can go through the different options of meat. Uh, what's that say? Veal, poultry, lamb, pork, Good job. fish. And then you can actually set your own program for whatever you want. Sorry, let me close this because I don't like doing that. So what we're going to go back to the meat, which is right there. <laughs> Dallas the beef. came out to see what it is. He's like, ooh, it smells delish. <laughs> So then we're going to decide what temperature we want it at. So then the taste, that we select our taste. We're going to, do we want it rare, medium rare, medium, or well done. So it's so Which cool would be because like you just... shoes. <laughs> what? The taste of shoes. Oh, like. the taste of if it's well done. Yes. Yeah. Well, there are some people that like well done. When Kim was here last week, she was like, burn it. New. Burn it. She likes her meat. Again, then just take your shoes off and chew on that. that <laughs> Whatever that's my your preference point. is, you're going to be able to do it with this. So, so the cool thing is that it's kind of like when you're at a restaurant and you're ordering and you're like saying, I want it to be medium well. You just tell the temperature gauge right. what you want it to be and it'll help figure out what that number needs to be. So if we're at, we wanted it to be a rare, a rare it would be 140. Uh, medium is 145. The uh, medium is actually 160. And then well done is actually 170. So those are our, our meat gauges. So let's figure out where we are right now. So dun, dun, dun. number one steak. 
you broke it right in the middle. If you get, this is a T-bone, so if you get too close to the bone, you're gonna get a different reading. So we stick it in, and then three seconds later. Three seconds, nice. So we're there. 191. Well, no, we were at, so that means we're done, to, we're what good do to go. What do you see? I see. 149, 150. 150. So. Sorry, no. I don't have the right angle to see what And then the next one, okay, stop. So then we're gonna go to this one, where we're gonna say 145. It's gonna read it again. Well, I'm not deep enough into this one, so. If I do this. What's that number? Oh, we're high there. 160, 170, oh, I'm, you know why? Because I'm too thick through it. Uh. So just a little bit through. 144. Hey! So we're almost there on these. Nice. So, so that beeping is telling us that you're in that the zone? That we're there. We're there. Cool. So now we're good with this. We and we can put the uh, right. attachment back on top of so it. We so we don't do it, but I'm going to clean it first because I like to keep, keep it clean. I did idea. just stick it into the meat. So I'll give it one more turn just because I like to get it. Just look at that, how nice, nice. that is. And I'm just going to get a little bit there. But then those are all set to go. So again, with the polder tongs, notice how it has that little foot so that it's perfectly balanced and it's not touching I'm gonna get the, uh, the like side it. here. So again, what a great array to have the right tools of the trade so that you can do the grilling and know that everything's gonna turn out right so that you can enjoy the party, so that you can enjoy, we had a lot of really cool parties out here. So um, hopefully party season's gonna be coming back again, right? And even if they're smaller parties, that's okay too. But it allows you to be able to have conversation, have a drink, enjoy, you know, doing, you know, having guests over, but then everything is still being monitored for you so that everything turns out well because you want to have good food. If you're going to have people over, you want to be able to have just right. So here you have it, just right. So one of the things that I like to do after we've done cooking, look at how beautiful that nice. is. Nice. And Can you're right, that? if this was smell vision <laughs> let's make some of that happen. Now, what a lot of people do, and I'm, they'll cut right into it. You want to let it sit, I right? like to let it rest. Yes, you got to you know, let it rest. It's got to rest. All the flavors need to sear into it. And, and then they it... soak around because now we've yeah. sealed this all the way around. We've added that butter on there to make it caramelize and really block block that in. So as it rests, now all the juices start flowing throughout the entire steak again. Ooh. So when we cut into it another minute or two minutes, then we'll really have a nice juicy nice. steak. You're making me hungry. So, there you go. Okay, so, let's go let's inside bring... and cool off a little bit. Come on in. Dallas. Dallas had to run out and see the steak uh, or try to taste the steak more accurately. Oh, okay. my God, it smells so good. So okay, what's next, boss? Let's go into, let's, we want to do our chickens? Sure. Let's do our chicken breasts. So All right, so we soak that in teriyaki. So one of the things that we did, so we buy chicken in bulk. Mm -hmm. um, and the reason we buy chicken in bulk is because we go through a lot of it. We like to eat a nice lean protein. A trick that I learned from a very good chef, an excellent chef. Um, actually, the, this particular chef has been in Guinness Book for, I think, seven times. Oh, really? He has. Who's it's that? actually my brother. Ah. <laughs> so what he does, and he suggests that you do, is you get your marinades or whatever you want to season it in. He says, and you put it in your, so if you buy in bulk, you can then put the seasoning into a plastic bag, then you freeze it. And what happens when you do that, here's a little time for you. Oh, thanks. Um, what happens is, by the time that it freezes, it's now been marinating for a couple hours. Uh -huh. And then once you pull it out of the freezer and you've let it thaw, now it's been marinating for another few hours without even trying. So as it thaws, it's soaking in more of the juices. And before it freezes, it's soaking in. So it's pulling all those flavors that your marinade is. Mm -hmm. So now, at the end of the day, we probably marinated this for you know, six, eight hours, nice. um, and, and just by freezing it. So taking a little bit of preparation ahead of time, and all we really did is, you know, threw a few marinades, some of the Kinder's marinades. Um, I think we use a salad dressing a couple times. Whatever your fla favorite flavors are, just put them in the, the Ziploc bag, put them in there, freeze them, you're good to go. And then when it comes out, you don't have to worry about seasoning anymore. And oh, by the way, before you put them in the freezer, Label what they you put them in there as. So that's <laughs> so very you have the important. right flavor, right? Exactly. exactly. You're not going to know when they're frozen. Let's go back uh, outside. Throw these. What on. do you need? Do you need any uh, utensils? No, we have the tongs out there. Amy assistant today. Right there. <laughs> All right, come on, guys. Come on, come on. Good boy. 
All right, so what's the temperature on the grill here? So this says we're actually at right around 400. Now, while I like the fact that these tell us this as far as this is the air temperature that's inside there, they're not always 100% accurate. Why? Because this temperature is reading at the top of the grill. Heat rises. So our temperature here, you know, 8 inches or 10 inches is from the grilling surface is going to be different. It just mm -hmm. has to be different. And typically it's a little bit hotter. So when you get one of these other thermometers that we have that you can leave inside the grill, it allows you to then get what is the cooking surface. And that's exactly what we're doing with the green egg. With that thermometer, we're able to then identify exactly where we are uh, on the air surface at the cooking level. So we're going to stick this right there. Nice. And these are nice, thick, big breasts. And we're going to put them right there and let those sit for a little bit. Now, what's uh, on average, how long would that take to grow? Uh, this is a little bit of a thicker breast, so um, that's going to probably take at around 400 degrees, about four or five minutes each side. Oh, and pretty then, fast. Yeah, it's pretty quick. Okay, pretty quick. good. Uh, Let's check out our brisket. So let's... over here, ooh, look at that. So I'm going to adjust that airflow because, again, we want it to be between 225 and 250 inside. And right now our it's gone up to right, our inside. air temperature, and now it's gone up to 241. So I should close it a right. little. Right. right? Gonna, yes, exactly. It's, we're choking out the, the oxygen that's going to it. Now those tongs, those are new. Probably not, not made to do exactly this, but no, but they will work because you don't tongs. want to touch the top of that. No, that's very hot. That is, you know, that is the cast iron. So those tongs are actually amazing tongs. Those have won actually design awards. Those are polder tongs, um, but if you look. The way that they've been designed is it's an easy grip. So you have that nice grip that's there. It's got this scissor that's here, but it allows you to actually go in and grip. So as you know, like with grill grates, they, they have the little grates that come straight through. Now you're able to get in between those and get underneath your meats or whatever it is so that you can scoop it up. Mm -hmm. And I notice and then, here the edge too. Right. Can you see, just how, I'm gonna hold it to the side. Can you see how it's um, sort of, Scalloped? What do you call that? What do you call this? Uh, yeah, it's, it's going to slant to it. It does. And so that's designed, again, to get underneath that your food so that you can get a hold of it. And the, it clamps on so nicely without a lot of pressure. The way that True. they were designed so that you yeah, don't have to Yeah, they kind of are bouncy up here a little right. bit. Right. So there is actually a spring that's actually in there. So there's a spring load, but it's not a spring that's going to bounce it back open. Right. But it allows you to get a good grip on things. Um, again, another design award by Polder, so congratulations to them and yeah, for sure. And team. They do really great stuff. They okay, really what else do we need to get ready? Uh, let's see what we have. Right. So we're preparing all of our meats. Our steak is now probably rested. Okay. So we are ready if you want to take a look at it. Ooh, I think that's a good idea. So let's see. We need a cutting board. A cutting board would be nice. And we have one of the steaks. We do. Okay, I'll let you choose. What do you want here? Uh, what do you choose a steak? Oh, just a regular dinner steak? Sure, why not? So, this has been rested. So we'll have that all the way through. Um, you can see that it's, it's nicely done. Look at that. You can feel just a little bounce that's there. So, Sure, you want to cut into this? It's going to be delicious. Do you want to bite? Well, what else are we going to do? Jamie wants to bite too. <laughs> we can look at it. It looks really pretty. Wait a minute. So let's We're cut doing into this it. in order to eat it. Hello. Nice. Look at that. Nice. All right. All thanks to uh, just All getting the just the there. right temp. Nice. So now let's everybody get a little bit of a taste. Look at how nicely this cuts. <laughs> but and not there's you, Dallas. Dallas, sorry. Dallas wants a little taste of it as well. So here again, this has got a nice cut to it. Um, it's nice and tender. You can see the knife that's there. So we're using actually a Rhineland's, Rhineland steak knife. And you can see how smoothly that it cuts through that. I should add that effort. to the feet as well. See, look at that. And so you don't have to push down and put a lot of weight behind or you know, energy or mm -hmm. pressure behind it. When you have the proper tools, which is a sharp knife, as we've talked about with Easy Slice and with Rhineland and any other cutting surface, the, the reality is it's not 
a sharp knife that cuts, hurts you, it's actually the dull knives. Because mm -hmm. you have to work more and you have to force it. And if you use an actual real sharp blade, um, it'll actually do the work for you. Gotcha. And you don't have to worry about it. But cool. as you can see, still within the screen. I'm going to add violin to the uh, live stream. Here, Jan. Get a little. Get in here. Come on, grab a little piece. Nice. All right, what do you think? Think Very good. <laughs> All right, Leah, your turn. How will I reach and feed? Mm -hmm. I was just going to add Riley to the. Thanks, baby. Oh, I thought you were going to feed me. I was going to, but oh. I, I don't know if that's like Amazon appropriate. <laughs> that is awesome. Is it delish? That is delish. Is it? You did good. Okay, and I'm going to answer some comments while I am here as okay, well. Okay, let's, let's really put it to the test. Look at that juiciness that's still there. Oh, I love that. Mmm. Very tender. I love the flavor that's on the outside of this. So, I mean, all we did, you saw what we did with that. Add a little bit of the butter. We added the Kinder's Butter and... Buttery Steakhouse seasoning. This was a... Let me pull that up too. This was a great find, and it's delicious. I think it adds a nice little flavor to it. It's while you get that kind of buttery taste to it, you also kind of have a little bit of the salt and pepper that's there. It's really mm -hmm. very tender, very nicely done. A well, great flavor. Steamy thinks it's overcooked, but we wanted medium well, right? So you asked for medium well. Yes, we were a little high on that, but we were. Um, that's what you had requested, so that's what we did. So. Um, and we can gauge it. I mean, what's nice is that the. Um, the thermometer allows you to, you know, gauge that so that, you know, if you wanted to take it off a little earlier, you could do that too. Yeah, just depends on your taste. That's a nice thing because when you have the right tools, you're able to, you know, make the right decisions for how you want it to be. Okay. Everyone's a little bit different. Um, and because we lost our feet, it time, changed the timing a little bit for us. We had to jump back on when we missed you. But um, again, it is to taste, so whatever your, your flavors are, whatever you like, the doneness or wellness that you like, it's there for you. And whether you do it by, you know, the pressure points that are inside your hand that tell you how you like it, or the thermometers, which, you know, are kind of the safest things to do. Uh, we enjoy working both ways and testing out different things to see what uh, works the best for you. Uh, and you're most comfortable with, obviously, so that's, a, that's big. So we have the chicken that's going. So I'm going to flip the chicken awesome. because it's important that we flip that um, again and seal that in. And then I we'll think move I can add while well, we are live. So uh, oh. what I'll do is I'll go and um, we'll work on doing a whole another section for um, Rhineland. But you can find it on Amazon. It is available and uh, great, great knife set. So, okay, let's uh, pop over and see what Darren's got going on out here in the front. All right, how's that chicken doing? Chicken's doing great. We've just flipped it over. We've got a nice caramelization that's coming right through here. Uh, great look. And who is that person that made the comment? Uh, F. Stanley. F. Stanley, if you got some ideas for us, we would love to hear them. Yeah. And you know what? Bring them on. We'll try them out. And we'll share them with you. And if you want to share them with us, we'd love it. Yeah, cook-offs. So, I love it. I don't know about the cook-off part. You may, you may beat me there. But. Well, all for fun. <laughs> How about just sharing? Sharing. Sharing is caring. Exactly. So let's go with that. We'll let that do its thing for a little while there. All right. And we'll put this away because we got to clean up our work area. Got it. And get the salmon ready. Do we need to clean this off so that we can test the chicken temperature? Let's do that. Let's do that. All right. This is what I'm good at sometimes cleaning. It's always a good agreement, right? To have like, if you cook, then you don't do the cleaning. But if you are, you know, doing the cleaning, you're not doing the cooking, you kind of trade off a little. Okay, I'll wash this. What needs to happen with that salmon? So the salmon, with the burger. we're going to put it on the plank. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. The plank is still in the water? The plank has been sitting in the water for Amazingly yeah. enough, it's probably been about an hour. Uh, yeah, actually we're really close to the hour. So because I've been touching other things, I want to wash my hands real quick. Um, and once again, going back to the folder thing, the nice thing is now that we have a whole tub of water, all I have to do to empty that out, is push down and the water will drain out of the sink. Let's just I'll give one more shot of water and we'll see that now that that's draining. And if there was any anything that I cut in there, veggies or whatever it might be, 
guess what, it'll catch it all. So that will just, just all fade away down below. And if there was anything there, it'll catch it. Then all I have to do is grab a hold of it and dump it out. But there's nothing there, so that's a good thing. We'll have to profile that for you on another live stream because I can't add products as we are um, already live. So we'll plan that out for you uh, the next time we brag about Polder. <laughs> So we're gonna put this right on. Look at that with a sand board. Put a nice little piece right there and there. Um, once again, we've soaked the wood so the wood won't burn. It'll kind of smolder. The grill, the heat from the grill comes from the bottom. So what's gonna end up happening is it's gonna start cooking from here, pushing up, which is then gonna take the flavors from the wood that's been soaking and put it into our salmon, which is gonna be tremendous. Nice. So. Um, we're going to let this sit for a second. Do we, what do we want to do with the hamburgers? Um, we want to cook them. We want to cook them. Really? And put cheese on them. Oh, and put cheese. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, <laughs> let's... What hold. can I help you do? We're going to put the salmon out for... Oh, I'm going to carry this. There you go. That's your job. Good job. <laughs> okay. okay. Back outside. Now, we're just going to... Time this out a little bit. Now so, those look like those are done to me. Uh, I well, mean, not that I know a whole lot about. You can hear that. That's just the water from the board. The cedar board. Mm -hmm. gotcha. So if you want to test it, okay. Open it up. You can do it on the side. Unlock Push the button. Open that all the way up. Without my fake fingernails, it's so much fun to be able to push buttons. And then put on. On power. power. Right there. Yep. Now go to poultry. Hit. Yep. Poultry. Poultry. Then we're going to go stab it or place it in probe inside to a meaty part. And what's it telling you? 107. We definitely don't want 107. Oh, no. It said 165 was the temperature, right? In the, I don't when know. I, I didn't read when it. I I first, it. Yeah. It said 165 when I went to poultry. So that's what it's supposed to be. Right. It's 165. Oh, so interesting. So I thought it was done. But, and I can actually, because it's now, so long, I can move my hand over here and I'm not over the grill, so I'm not feeling all that well, heat. Well, the other thing is, if you push it all the way through, remember, the farther down you go, you're gonna go through the grill, or through mm -hmm. the meat. Mm -hmm. So you really only wanna get to the middle of the meat, and that's where you wanna check it. And what's that number? 125. Okay, so that so one's this, more done. This one is 129. Oh, so when good. we get to the, so we'll keep an eye on it. Mm -hmm. uh, when we get to it. And I'm gonna just double check that, so meat. Well, oh, it's done as pork, fish, see across the bottom. Um, that's your program, beef, veal, poultry. That's where I saw the 165. That so okay. that's the optimal temperature we want on the inside. Exactly. Gotcha. So, and then of course now it's just sensing the outdoor temperature. Correct. So we can test it again. Cool. Okay. All right, easy peasy. Then you just push peasy. the button to close it on the side. Lower that, put it there in and rest it. Off. Save the batteries, batteries do come with. Oh, and there's a light too. Oh, that's there cool. It has the light built in. So there's a, no, well, the light is actually, so that's fine. The light is here. Right. So when you're using it, you can see right, what you're, so you can see what exactly you're, what it is. Where you're putting it. Cool. So if we were in here and it was dark out, you would see that we would have the light. You see, yeah. So see. Cool. But since we're in the daytime, you may not see it all that well. Oh, a little bit, you can see. Yeah. See right here? I'm going to put my finger all the way in there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then it comes off after, I think it's seven seconds. Cool. So, All right. How's our brisket? How did you know it was going to beep? It's you just said, how is our brisket? And then it just started beeping. Uh, just like we're that. drop temperature. It's 249. Oh. So it, it just magically found it's, its It did. Place. It's happiness. So right now, if uh, just to catch you up, if you're just tuning in. So we have our polder thermometer, and this is a dual thermometer. So it's measuring um, through this cable on the inside, the air temperature, which we want for this particular meal to be between 250 and 225. And right now that temperature is at 249. And then later, like hours later, we'll use this for um, actually testing the meat, the brisket, um, and getting the right temperature there. So right now it's beeping because it hit 250, which is the high. So we want to keep it at that optimal temperature. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just uh, close it a little bit because we want less air to be... Um, going inside the grill so that there's less heat and hopefully that'll start working pretty soon. 
So, oh, hey, started working right away. Went from 251 down to, or 252 down to 251. All right, we're gonna get this grilling thing down. What you got? So I wanted to show you the, the probe that's we've talked about it several times. So the, this is the probe that you talked about for the air temperature. Okay, so this unit is the same identical unit yes. that we have. So there's, there's actually... two inputs. One is for your air temperature that you just plug in here. And this sits inside your grill on the grill grates in between there. That's why these are fit this way. And you just set it inside there. And that's how it sits. So, so this must be able to withstand some like crazy high temperatures. 500, or I forgot what the actual number is, but yes, it definitely is. So this just sits there and, and, it, and it continues. The cable is safe. Works in ovens as well, in case your, mm -hmm. you know, your interior number don't work. Or, exactly. Mm -hmm. So, but this is working in what the environment that you're cooking in. And that's important because, again, um, you don't want it too hot. You don't mm -hmm. want it, you want to stay within typically a range that's there. You want to talk about this inside? We could. Let's do that, because it's a little hot out here, but we're gonna continue the tour of that thermometer. <laughs> There's another whole part to it. I just wanna cool off a little bit, because we are in Florida, and we are grilling, and it's probably like 100 degrees out there. Well, <laughs> with, with, but with the heat off the grill. <laughs> oh, with the heat off the grill, it's definitely toasty. Okay. So then you have the other one that goes into, which is the regular uh, thermometer, which identifies exactly, this probe goes into your meat, or whatever you're, you're cooking, and this I love that they nice put the cap on there, so it's nice and well, safe. Well, it is sharp, so you don't want to get poked yeah. or poke someone else with it. Exactly. So keep, keep, keep. And then this is battery operated. This is battery operated. They actually, right there, there are your batteries. Batteries are included. It has a little safety or a little tab here, and you pull that tab, and the batteries then become fully operational. There you go. So um, we could turn it on and give you a quick little tour if you'd like. Sure. Let's do it. So, we like tours. So you take. Let me answer some comments as you're doing. So. This goes in like that. You heard the beep, means it turned on. We go back to this, take off the little but or tag, that tag, tab that's there. And it's very simple to operate. So what it says is um, right we're on a beef loin, and all we have to do is hold this button and it lights up. And when that flashes, we then get to select what our food is. Beef loin, we can program it ourselves, ribs, Pork strips, uh, pork, uh, pork loin, pork butt, prime rib, turkey, chicken, brisket, which is what we're cooking. Mm -hmm. And we'll go back to that and then back to the beef one. So let's go back to the brisket because that's what we're cooking. And so then it gives you the options. Once you've selected that, then we go and we hold this, this uh, settings button again. And it gives us options here. We have thin, if it's a thin cut, if you want to do as it pulled or you want to do a thick cut. You also notice that the temperature also adjusted on it. So we set thick, so we're going to set that. So then it tells us, okay, keep your, your temperature between a high of 250 and a low of 225. Because we're not in the grill, it's not showing us or uh, in our environment, we're not, we're not seeing anything yet. So then we also have, they want us to be at 195 for the meat temperature. And right now this is reading at 82 because we're just in the environment. Oh. Oh. We've got our pool guy our coming. Pool guys. So he's gonna come visit. I wanna say hi to um, Evan as well. So he's asking where we're grilling from, from St. Pete. And uh, yeah, it really is beautiful here. So I'm gonna grab Dallas. Okay. How about you work on that salmon in the kitchen? Okay. And thanks for joining us, Evan. All right, let me save the pool guy. Hi. Okay, so, oh. I would love to show you the salmon, but we already put that on the grill. So, um, what she, what did she prepare with? Do we know? I look like a little butter and some seasoning, probably mm -hmm. an all seasoning type of thing that she likes to do. And then we've got it sitting on the cedar plank. The cedar plank is great. All you have to really do with the cedar plank is actually soak it in water for about a, an hour and it, and it soaks into the wood. And then once it soaks into the wood, then we can actually put the salmon pieces on it and then put it on the grill and start cooking with it which is great because it adds so much more flavor to it, um, to the actual salmon or whatever else you're cooking on. It's uh, a, a neat little find, and I love cooking with that because it does change uh, the flavors that are actually you're going to eat then. So, um, any other questions? Um, Evan just asked where we're grilling from, and it looks beautiful. Thanks, Evan. Yeah. Appreciate it. I'm just trying to multitask and hold on to Dallas because... Because <laughs> our pool man is 
out doing his thing. And Dallas is our sweet little puppy, and he hasn't been around very many people because as a puppy, his lifetime hasn't been, you know, he hasn't been around that long. So uh, we're working on his socialization. So he, right now he's our little guard dog. Well, now that we're off, off quarantine. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so what else is happening? Well, we have the salmon that's grilling going out there. So okay. that's already working on that plank. Um, so one of the things I could do as a prep is do a, um, a uh, pineapple mango chutney. Let's Don't do me. it. I'm just answering Evan. Sorry. Okay. All right. So let's get that. Need another. So I don't know where I came up with where this came from, but I think we were probably out to a restaurant of some sort. What do you want? Another cutting? Yeah. This one? Sure, that's fine. This one hasn't been used, let's just rinse it off. Okay. Uh, so yes. So we have a few mangoes that are here. This one might be a little over. So there's a few ways to do it. I actually, a little while ago, got a little cheater action here. Uh, so you can actually. Okay, wait a minute. What are you talking about? So it's a mango slicer. So uh -huh. uh, what you do is you just put this on here and you cut it this way, and then you just push down. Oh, so you don't even peel it. Well, you do it now once it's on. So but I mean, you don't peel it beforehand. No, so then it, it separates the the little seed that's there. Cool. there. So that's a lot smarter than how I learned to do it. Because somebody told me that you can take a wine glass. Yes. And like, uh, which is great. But dangerous. Unless, yeah, it could be dangerous. So it cuts through and then you just push right down through it. And then that's it. And these are a little bit ripe, huh? This one's a little ripe. So then you just pull okay, it out. Okay, we're just going to eat them. So no, we can. <laughs> So if you, you have that spoon that we're talking about, uh, my little fat little spoon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this one's a little right, a little over right. Because it's not really like very nice. Whoopee, hello. <laughs> Wizard. Oh, uh, fun in the kitchen. So, oh, oh. this one's over. That one's oh. oh! Oh, I didn't do that myself. <laughs> There's an epic bear. Okay, we won't look there. So, you gotta love live. <laughs> you love live. Well, I would stop right now while you're ahead. No, I'm And while you're behind. <laughs> it's on my behind that I'm worried about. Okay. So we'll go with that. I, I, That's fine. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. So, once again, we are live, so you're having way too much fun with this. We don't usually do this together. <laughs> no, we don't. And that normally doesn't happen. I really don't like that one. Uh, so, we just go right to this one. Okay, let me clean some of this up for you. So, this. Right here, you're done with it, right? Mm -hmm. How about we just get rid of some of that extra juice right here? We're going to need a man cake for you. It's called an apron. <laughs> right? I have one. Uh-oh, just in case there's comments. Oh, somebody's got a comment about that, I'm sure. <laughs> okay. Uh, let me get my wipes here. And we'll... <laughs> so then we're just separating it from the two. And I'm sure there's a, a much better technique that I would love to learn about. So if anyone has any great ideas, please share them. Um, and then... Let me see what I can do. Can I get in here? <laughs> Sure. All right. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. Okay, all back to normal, but I'm leaving you to clean up yourself. I'll take care of that. <laughs> so. Then we just basically cut these up into small little sections. You can see this way that this knife cuts, it cuts straight through everything. And so I, what we're looking at is the uh, Easy Slice knife. Correct. Um, and the Easy Slice knife, as you can tell, 
just cuts right through everything so effortlessly, not putting any pressure on it, uh, and then cut it into little cubes. And it doesn't have to be perfect because it is kind of a chutney. And, and now, this is pretty ripe. And this is over, right? So, yeah, honestly. sometimes we, uh, usually you do it where it's a little less juicy than that. Yes, but the good thing is the juice in many respects, I like the juice. Oh yeah, because it's going to soak right in there. Let me get this little thing out of there. And don't ever really put your hands in front of the knives, please. <laughs> if you're actually home. <laughs> Just safety precautions that some of us like to keep. I know that you uh, are always looking out for me. Yes, I am. Okay, so you need a big bowl. Big bowl. Okay. How big? Like really big, medium big? Uh, whatever you have, I don't care. Because it won't be. Well, are you going to cut the pineapple too? I am going to cut some of the pineapple, yes. Okay, so we'll start with that, and then if we need something more. So, this is actually just tearing. So, I'm going to cut some of the pineapple. You don't need to film that part. So, oh, because that's gonna, just really mushy at the end. Yeah. So, we'll put this in the bowl. Alrighty. Uh, Toss this. Toss this. And that's gone. Again, I like the juices. Oh, nice. Save the juices. Oh, and I just sent them into that in the sink. You did. Oh. But it's okay. I got a bunch of these things. <laughs> that was not for you. It was for me. <laughs> okay, so. Here you go. Next thing to do is. Actually, I could do these two. Let me clean this up a little do bit. I, okay. Do I test fate and you try these two as well? Yes. Yeah, okay. So they're not dead unless not usual. Well, I don't know yet. I haven't cut it. That one looks a little better. That one's a little softer. That one's. You said that it's supposed to be like a avocado, like the feel of yeah. an avocado, right? Look at that. Now it's, that's that was good. You see how it just cut right through it. Okay. So that's a nice one. Wow, that has a really nice smell too. Yes. Yeah. That one's much better. But this one. Maybe a little overripe. I wouldn't do that if I were you. Just saying. <laughs> You're just saying. <laughs> I'm never going to think of you the same when you were cutting open mangoes. That's not There you bad. go. So. Okay. So those are going to be better. But I have a notice, Hmm? I have a Oh, I got it in here. I'm cleaning up. I don't know if that's called cleaning, but it's just a <laughs> Can I have a new one? Little things in life. How's that one? I don't like that one. It's too thick. I need a thin one. It's a thin flat. You're serious. I'm not that one. Yeah. Oh, good. Thank You're you. You're dripping on the. I didn't do. No, I didn't. That sounds disgusting. <laughs> I wouldn't do that. So, this to me, I like this one. It's nice. It has a nice thin blade to it. Well, it's not a blade, but. An edge. It's the edge. Thank yeah. you very much. That's what it's called. Yeah, that's what I'm here for. Help you out with the vocabulary. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> Is that what that's called? I wasn't sure of that either. Where's that spoon? Well, don't worry about it now. It's getting clean. Thank you. I always thought if you just put the dishes into the dishwater in the sink, that maybe they'll just magically clean themselves up. Has that ever happened? I found it. Oh, that's great. Still don't need it. <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> Hello, Maui. Okay. Okay, so there's one, two. Get rid of those. Now, this is really probably pretty boring. Do you want to talk to them about something else while I'm doing this? Um, sure. Like... <laughs> uh, let me just find something to try this on. Um, okay, so let's go talk more about some of the other holder products. Get the burgers to go, and oh, then right. oh, uh, the Oh, you check the chicken? Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. That may have been Yeah, that went in just way too late. Okay, Dallas, stay, 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 stay. That didn't work either. Nope, that didn't work either. Okay, we're going to figure out Dallas. Come on out. The, and the chicken and the uh, whole guy all at the same time. Uh, okay. Uh, let's turn it on. Power's on. And... 
168, 172, yeah, because it said 165. So it's beeping to tell us that it's ready. The temperature that we wanted it to be was 165. It's at 172. And now I'm testing the other one. Uh, 156. Okay. So we didn't overcook them. Okay. So good. We're going to say, okay, that's done. Uh, I need a plate. Okay. Look at the chicken for just a minute. I'll be right back. And that salmon's done too, right? Wow, that looks awesome. Okay, let me just set this one down. And so on here, I'm gonna go through meat. And so that's lamb. That is pork. That's fish. So it says we should be 145. Can you see that? Can you see the LED? Okay, so let's see. Three seconds. So, 125. Okay. And what did you say? 145? Is that right? How are we doing? So, chicken's done. The oh, yes. salmon should be 145. You're but we're at 117. Yeah. I think I'm not doing it in the right place. No, you're doing it about right. You're a little, you're further than half. So, if you just kind of keep it just the middle of them. The salmon, you're going to get a better pump. Show us. So typically you want to open that up too. You don't have to, but then you just want to get it to right about where the middle is. Oh, that's why my hand was getting warm, because it was over the... So we're at 124. 124, we need 145. There you go. So All we right, just so need a little, little bit longer. longer. The salmon tends to cook, though, even after it yes, comes off, right? Yes, it does. Yep. So how do you gauge that? So you still, again, you're letting it rest, so it's going to allow it to... to to spread and everything else. So it won't get, you'll take it off like right at that level. Right so at 145. That, right at 145, okay. so then when it rests, it'll go a little bit more, mm -hmm. but it's still serving and you're still serving. Gotcha. All right, so chicken is done. Chicken and chicken. I have to imagine this is not gonna take long. It's gonna take just a couple minutes. Yeah, you're gonna, I'm gonna Dallas. get, I'm gonna save Come the here. cool guy and you can handle the chicken. Let me just. I have the chicken. Oh, or maybe the salmon. Okay, come on back. Come here, baby. Jamie, you're getting your exercise. Mm -hmm. So, we've got the mango cut up. So we'll put this here, we'll let this sit down there. And I have a tendency not to allow that to just sit that side. I usually flip it on the other side that's a little more attractive. So now we're gonna do the pineapple. Pineapple's been sitting a little bit long, um, but we will, the great thing about this knife, easy slice, is it allows you to cut right through everything pretty quick, the first time around. Um, so it's very, very sharp, and it cuts straight through. It's got these scallop serrations. The scallop serrations allow it to actually cut through instead of tear through. The other neat thing about it is it, it has these little air holes, as, as you can see through the design. These are actually with intent, not just to make them look cool, but so when you have starchy foods like your potatoes and things like that, nothing is gonna stick to it because it has the air separation between the blade and your whatever you're cutting, so your, your starches and things like that. It's also been, you may not be able to see it, but on this side, it's sharpened, and on this side, it's sharpened. So both sides are sharpened. So I don't know if you've ever had the situation where when you're cutting with a tip, traditional knife, you either push to one side or the other. This allows you to cut straight through because both sides have been etched. Mm -hmm. And, and it, it's it, great if you're a lefty um, right. and you're always having that trouble too because exactly. it works um, either right or left. Correct. And they stay sharp forever, which we can't go into all of that detail, but you can find it on the page for Easy Slice. That's correct. So um, there's, I'll just cut down a little easier that way. So um, when I cut it up, there's a lot of different ways to cut up pineapple. It depends if you're gonna keep it, you're gonna go through the whole thing, whatever it might be. Um, I typically just cut it into smaller cubes. It's a little bit easier for me. You don't typically eat the core of it. Um, and those that have cut pineapples before, it's really pretty simple. Uh, 
So I just kind of go through it fairly quickly and just go through this. Nice. So, and then... God, that smells so good. So then we'll cut through it one more time, we'll center that up. And then just, you can see it, just how it cuts through so effortlessly. And then we we'll just pick this and add it to our mix here. Nice. I'm gonna let you keep going, I'm gonna check on the salmon. Okay, oh yeah, take yeah, the salmon. Yeah, because the salmon's good. probably done. Salmon here we go. <laughs> Whole guy is safe, he's done. Okay, this is beeping to tell us it's a little bit out of the range of where we want it to be for the brisket, but I'm going to come back to that. I'm just going to quiet it for just a second because the salmon is probably ready. Uh, so take a good look at the salmon. I'm going to go get a plate. <laughs> check it first okay so remember we looked at it just a moment ago the way that the thermometer is going to work is that we're going to do meat and that's beef that's veal that's poultry that's lamb that's pork and that's fish so 145 is what we want for the temperature to be and it'll beep if it's hitting that temperature Get in there. Where is that? 130? Let's see what that says? 131. Let's see this one. Right in the center. 132, 133. Okay, so we're getting there. I'll bet here on the edges it's going to be right there. Yeah, because it's thinner on the edges, so I'm checking it right in the middle. So I'm going to pull it off because again, with salmon, and you know this if you're a salmon lover, you want to uh, take it out just a little bit early because again, because usually it's thicker in the middle. It will, you know what, I wonder how you do that. Okay, so I don't exactly know how to do this. We're gonna leave it up to the pro and I'll let him take it off of the uh, wood plank. <laughs> it's getting all that flavor. Come on back in here. Oh, before we do that, let's adjust our other grill. So over here, again, we're cooking our brisket and we want this temperature to be between 250 and 225. And now it's at 221, so it's fallen underneath there. So I'm just gonna adjust just a little bit, open it up to let a little bit more air in there. All right, okay. Come here, guys. Come here. temperature gauge into the edge of the salmon where it's less thick, the temperature's higher. Sure. When you put it into the middle, it's not quite as high. So I pull it off just a few degrees um, early from the middle because I don't want the edges to be dry. Too done. Yeah, yeah. Good. And you like your salmon a certain way. I do, and that way is not overcooked. <laughs> First and foremost. Okay, so how are you doing on your chutney? I'm doing great. Good. Let me answer any questions. And then I think we're gonna wrap things up. You wanna throw that uh the burgers on there? Sure. Um glad to chat as well.